Welcome to an awesome edition of Rebellion's Educational Series. I'm here with a super brilliant Didier Lopes, who comes to me referred by Christina Key, possibly the smartest female I've met on Wall Street. Christina tells me that Didier's work at OpenBB might replace Bloomberg. And the more I've researched on OpenBB, the more I'm so excited to have DDA. Thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for having me, Alex. <laughs> uh, the, the pleasure is all mine. So you, you have an engineering background, you're an engineer, and you built this platform to right now complement Bloomberg, but maybe one day take it over? Yeah, that's kind of the, kind of the theory yeah. <laughs> in simple terms. Awesome. So what was the genesis of this? Yeah, so... Um... I think it's important to give my my story. So yeah, I was like a uh, studying like engineer, and then I started getting into finance. I I helped a, a friend of mine, which used to be my teacher of maths, doing his uh, PhD thesis, the code behind it, and he was in Financial Times series, and so that kind of entered um and like I entered the financial world through that angle. And after that, I was like, you know, this was interesting, but it's just like Financial Times series that there's so much. When you think about your investment, like time series is just a part, a component of it, right? And so I started like doing research, you know, learning more. And I wanted to, you know, I had some savings and I wanted to put some uh, money, buy some shares of like, you know, Apple or whatever. The thing is that coming from an engineer perspective, like everything you do is usually automated because engineers are lazy. But I was getting into this financial world and I, I was doing a lot of manual things. And so having a full-time job, like, you know, eight hours a day, I would come home and I would do research. And at the beginning, I could do research for a couple of tickers because I, I didn't know more. But as I started like learning about, you know, options, fundamentals, insider trading, government trading, and all, all of these uh, day, that data that existed, like my process started taking much longer. And so this is when I was like, you know, I mean, this, this won't scale uh, until one day, like I was spending my entire weekend doing research. And I was like, you know, I mean, this is not something that I enjoy doing just because next weekend I'm going to have to be doing the same. So how come I cannot automate? It's just data at the end of the day, you know? Um, and so that's when I started building uh, GameStone Terminal at the time. Um, now we call it OpenVB Terminal and I made it open source and it went viral uh, like very early on. And yeah, <laughs> it's kind of the beginning. <laughs> No, wonderful. So if I wanted to write code for a portfolio manager that mm -hmm. looked at 13F filings, the, the manager's holders, and I have an OpenBB platform, what can OpenBB do for me? Yeah, so OpenBB at the end of the day is a data aggregation tool. So we provide you, we don't own the data. So when you install the OpenBB terminal on your machine locally, what you are having is like this middle layer that provides you access with all of this financial data, but we don't own it. So what you have to do is you set up your API keys and you have access to data. So like a typical workflow is someone, okay, I want to start using OpenB, they install it locally, and then they see, okay, I want I want these particular data sets of like fundamentals of like, uh, you know, insider trading. And then you see, okay, to get access to this data, I need these API keys. And so you sign up with the data vendor directly, data Bento being one of them, you sign up with them, they give you an API key, which allow you access to a free tier of data. Yeah. And then if you are taking value out of that, you can just upgrade that API key and the terminal will work seamlessly. So in a way, it allows you to do this a beginning of exploration into the data that you have access to. And then you can pay for, for a premium tier or you can pay for uh, you know uh, a new data set and you have access to it. But we just hey, relay. Hey, where where were you 25 years ago when I was a student? Oh my God. <laughs> you, you are automating the quantitative research process. Yes, yes, that, that's, that's, that's a, yeah, that, so that was my, my beginning goal, you know, so when we introduced this, so I introduced the terminal first, it was like just this aggregator, but one of the most exciting features that we introduced was the, the capability to do routines, where you can pipeline commands together. And so you can wake up in the morning and uh, have like a pipeline, a, a, a document that's called .openbb that just has a list of commands. And you can say, run these for ticker Apple or run these for tickle Pal Palantir, you know, and it retrieves all of these data for you to just analyze, which is where I thought that, you know, there's there's something. Why, why hasn't this platform been invented already? This seems like it should have been invented in 2010. This is so I think the problem is the data, you know, the problem is data is really complex. So no. here we, we, we avoid the data issues because we put those on the user, you know? So you install the machine on, on your computer and you use your API keys. So OpenVB doesn't have any liability. Now, what some people ask is like, okay, I have access to all this, this data with API keys. I can just build a product on top, right? And it's like from OpenVB side, you can, but 
it doesn't work like that with data vendors because your API key only allows you for you personal access. If you start, if you want to monetize or create a business out of it, you can't just use the data that uh, comes with that API key. You know, you need to upgrade. You need to pay license fees uh, in terms of you know either display or redistribution, depending on what you want to do. And so it's a bit tricky the the data side. No, you've created an integration platform for quantitative data. Um, there was a reason Christina was so adamant that I should talk with you. Uh, this is really one of the coolest things I've come across in a very, very long time. So you guys, I assume you've done a seed uh, round and you have employees. It's not just you. Or tell us about it. Yeah. yeah. So um, when I made it open source, we got like 4,000 GitHub stars in under 24 hours. And oh, my the, God. The traction. Wow. Yeah. The, and it, this was like two years ago. You know, now I think 4,000 is a bit more easy for AI projects. They get like crazy really fast. But at the time, you know, that wasn't really common. And uh, well, our, view, our viewers was, should know that DDA has a, a, a master's degree from Imperial College of London, which uh, Rebellion Research ranks is you know, easily one of the top you know, 10, you know, give or take, universities in the world. Uh, Imperial College, London, London School of Economics, Oxford, Cambridge, uh, you know, these are arguably the best schools in all of Europe uh, and the world, competing only with really with Harvard, Princeton, Stanford, MIT, I guess a uh, Tsinghua University in China, but frankly, nobody wants to go to university in China, so they really shouldn't be compared. <laughs> I have many Chinese friends. I don't I don't want to offend. In fact, one of Rebe one of my partners of rebellion is uh, Chinese, and he agrees. Nobody wants to go to school there. But um, no, I'm a huge fan of Imperial College of London. Uh, it's actually one of my favorite schools. Um, so at this point, what are you charging for either, you know, a quant or a student? Can we talk about pricing? Yeah, yeah, we can. So on the open source, it's fully free. It's, a, it's literally an MIT license, which means that you can you can do anything you want with the code even. So you can fork the project, use it locally, and we cannot do anything to you because that's oh, an I, MIT license. I want to, I want to, I want to be an investor in your company. And so how, how are, you know, what are we going to charge eventually for this platform? This yeah. Is so the platform for us remains free because for the platform for us is kind of our core that we then use to power the pro and the terminal pro is our enterprise offering. And this is where we go after enterprise customers. So these are like family offices, edge mm -hmm. funds, and this is a very different interface. You know, it's way more mature is a web app because the, the, the platform that we're talking about earlier is a common line interface and is built in Python. DDA, you know, I hear, I hear all the time from, from banks left and right, that they need exactly what you've been building here for their quantitative department, you know, a, a way to integrate data so that the models can be built and tested, you know, without having to yeah. create a whole new thing and a whole new thing. It's it's such a, it's almost having to create a whole new nest as opposed to a yeah. bunch of nests connected. And everyone does it. Everyone does it. Everyone reinvents it every time. You know, yeah, that's exactly. the problem. Yeah. It is reinvented yeah. every time. Very well said. That's exactly what happens in Wall Street. It's, it's so much time is just wasted on quantitative portfolio management research. It's one of the bulkiest, uh, least efficient, you know, kind of exercises out there. You know, when you train for basketball and someone leaves the team, everyone else has been training and everybody knows how to play and you can keep, you know, but when quantitative portfolio yeah. management, someone leaves the fund, all of a sudden, who knows what the code is and this. And yeah. and, and often people will, I, my very good friend, Jess Stouth, uh, adore her. She is the CIO of Fidelity uh, Systematic. And she spends half of her days over the last five years as the CIO of Fidel Systematic learning code from portfolio managers that have left, moved on, switched, don't care about that group anymore because they have a new job and you care about what you get paid for. So much yeah. of Wall Street is bogged down by having to learn code from, frankly, people moving on and then leaving this code and having to, it's just, it's, it's unbelievable how much inefficiency there is in the banking world. And, and that's why I'm excited about OpenBB because inefficiency in Wall Street spells market share. So I agree. Yeah. I, and I think that this is why open source is the way, you know, because if open source doesn't die. If someone leaves, you know, it, it just doesn't die because yeah. the code remains open source. People remain contributing to it and it can become a standard, you know, much easily than a closed source product, which a company can do anything they want, you know? So, uh, so this, this is awesome. Um, very, very, very excited for this. Have you started working with any uh, universities, any financial engineering programs? 
Yeah, we have worked with with uh, a few uh, Indiana, for instance, university in the US. We're talking with a few others now, um, not just on the platform side, but also actually on the enterprise offering. They are interested in giving that to students. So there's a few uh, universities. Um, on the platform side, there's actually, I would say that our main uh, ideal customer persona there is actually students and uh, universities because they can access this data from wherever they are without being adding to be in campus, special login, special credentials, having to queue, having to get rate limited. You know, they get all of these benefits that, you know, they can be at home and they can get like coursework done and teachers can create the, the course content and create like a script that uh, the data that gets downloaded is the same for all the students. So making that process like really seamless. No, this is a product that should be offered at every financial engineering program in America. I This is so useful for French engineering programs. And that's, I mean, French engineering programs is what Rebellion Research spends so much of our time on. You know, we work with about a dozen French engineering programs around the country. And I just love this for the students. It's great for the students. It's also great for the inefficiency of portfolio management tests on Wall Street. The fact that you've got an answer for multiple questions here is obviously why Christina one of the smartest minds I've come across on Wall Street was so adamant that I speak to you. And I'm very thankful that she was. Uh, Diddy, this was great. I'm going to see you in New York in a few weeks when you're in. I'm going to take you out for lunch. Yep. Fantastic. Yep. Awesome. So uh, I, I look forward to lunch with you in Midtown and uh, we'll, we'll take you from Thank there. You. Thank you so much for coming on today. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Oh, Thank you. awesome.